Greetings and salutations. Thanks for clicking on the video. Today we're going to have some fun. We are going to set up Ubuntu GNOME in a virtual machine and I'm going to try some different things today. So this is kind of an experimental video. We're going to see what happens. And uh, I haven't taken a look at Ubuntu GNOME since I did a brief look at it when it first went into beta and that was late February. So I'm kind of anxious to see what the final release looks like. This is Ubuntu 16.04 LTS with the GNOME desktop, a community spin of Ubuntu. I have a soft spot, a soft spot in my heart for the GNOME desktop. I ran it for a long time, a couple of years ago, as my main daily driver. And there are some things about it that will annoy me a little bit, but I also think it's kind of a cool idea. So I like to keep an eye on what they're doing. All right. Let's go ahead and full screen this and get logged in. So far, so good. It booted up. That's always a good thing. All right. There's the desktop. This is not an active desktop. You can't create folders here. This is the activities, which opens up the favorites. And you can choose from here to look at the applications that are installed on the computer. You can also manage your desktops from here. So that's what's installed. Not a whole bunch of stuff here, but enough to get you started. We're going to add some software to it here as we roll along. So and get out of that for now and the first, actually the first thing that I need to do before we do anything here I want to change some things about this make it a little easier to see and we're gonna try and get some drivers installed for VirtualBox so let's do tweak there it is alright what's the first thing we want to change first of all I want to use the dark theme and let's go down here to desktop. I want to activate the desktop. Let's put the home folder on there so we can actually use it. Not a fan of desktops that don't allow you to put icons on them. Here are the fonts. Let's scale that up a little bit. And then I think in accessibility, the accessibility options, it will allow me to just set large fonts across the board. So let's do that. I think that's under settings. So go to the settings menu. And we want universal access. There's more settings that are actually in the tweak tool than this, but we're going to go ahead. Now well, that's already on. I guess I already did that when I did that. So, okay, we'll go with that. That's good. And to get those to take effect, we need to log out to the, get the theme to take effect and all that stuff. So I'll just go ahead and restart. The boot time is pretty zippy. Versions of Ubuntu GNOME I have used before have taken a little bit longer to load. This is a virtual machine with two gigabytes of memory and it's getting two processor cores. So, for those of you watching this, and we do not have the VirtualBox drivers installed yet. We're going to take care of that now. All right. My home folder's up under there. I don't know whether I like that or not. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is jump to a terminal. I want to install a couple of packages before we get into doing things 
with the system. Yeah, I know I always tell you to update the system first. We're going to take care of that. I'm just changing things up a little bit. So we want to install some packages. Okay. I want to put uh, make in here. DKMS GCC. This is so we can compile the VirtualBox drivers for the video. I'm not going to do it from the ones that are in the repositories. I'm going to actually do it from the VirtualBox virtual disk that has the drivers on it. And we also want to install a boon to Mate welcome I type that right yes okay Ooh, that's a lot of stuff go get it and install it at least it's moving along I was goofing around with virtual machines yesterday and I noticed that sometimes for no apparent reason when you're trying to download stuff in the repositories it would get really 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 slow I don't know whether that was because the repositories were super busy or whether it was some sort of issue with the network connection here in VirtualBox I know software updates are available I'm going to take care of that And as soon as this gets installed, we're going to go ahead and install those drivers. I put the uh, DKMS and the Make and the GCC in there just to make sure that it would build properly. All right, we have our packages installed. So now I've got to go down here and find device. That's not it. That's it. Okay, yeah, download. It's doing this every time for some reason. I've had this problem with VirtualBox 5. Every time I want to go get the drivers from the virtual install disk there, it has to go download the disk. I don't know what's up with that. It's not actually saving it on the machine. It works. So just a little peculiarity there in VirtualBox 5. Yes, insert the disk. So it should just appear here. We're going to run it. I typed it wrong. Try this again. There we go. This takes a couple of minutes for this to do this this way because we're actually building the drivers from source code instead of installing the packages. And for whatever reason, I've noticed that that works only some of the time lately in VirtualBox. So if you're having that problem, just attach this disk to whatever operating system you're trying to install and go ahead and do it from there. These work. While it's doing that, show you something else here about GNOME that I like and that is if I open this I also have uh, the virtual desktop manager over here and they're dynamically allocated so what we can do is is let's open up another application and I don't know just open up eh, files okay so we'll open up the file manager I noticed that Ubuntu GNOME has elected to use these smaller icons with the straight GNOME desktop you usually get these giant icons okay so I can just take this and drag this over here and it should put it on that desktop and it's running a little it's running a little laggy I don't know can I do it from here yes I can you can also come over here and just grab an application so let's take Shotwell here and just put it over here on this desktop 
and then to move back and forth between desktops and it's taking it a second to get itself going there hopefully that didn't crash okay this is done okay so any key to get out of that and let's see here what's going on with our desktop oh yeah it opened it it opened it the photos application did I say that was shot well is this shot well what are we looking at I think that is gnome photos let's see which one we got about yep photos and this is version 318.2 so that means we're on the 318 gnome desktop which is actually at this point kind of old that is a six month old version of Ubuntu gnome the desktop that they have installed in GNOME. Okay, let's go ahead and restart the system to make sure that our drivers are working. Restart, please. And this time it should fill up the entire screen if the driver is installed the way they were supposed to. Now we got a different splash screen, so I guess that worked. Yep. So let's log ourselves in. Yay, we got a full desktop with 3D acceleration. Awesome. So the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to go down here to the software list. I want to see if the software that I installed there is actually in here. Yep, there's the software boutique. So those of you who have been watching my Ubuntu Mate videos will no doubt recognize this application. Guess what? It works on other versions of Ubuntu as well. <laughs> So we'll get into that in just a few moments. But what I want to do here is I'm going to open up a terminal and I am going to open I'm going to open the Ubuntu Mate welcome. Here it comes. And we're going to use the tools in here to update our virtual machine running Ubuntu GNOME. So go to getting started. And the first thing we need to do is update the machine. So let's go ahead and do that. Shouldn't be too many updates since this disk image is actually two days old since they released Ubuntu on the 21st, which was a really happy day because I was getting into reading all about Ubuntu and then found out that Prince died. I guess you have to be a certain age, but boy, that really bummed me out. There are some people that you just never think are ever going to leave us, you know? Oh, well, there must have been just a few, couple of updates, not a whole lot. So, we're getting our software updated on the machine. That's done. Let's install the codex package. This will give us all the codex so we can listen to music if we want to. Of course, this is a virtual machine. I won't be doing any of that, but we're doing it just to see what happens. And we're, yeah, the servers seem to be going pretty fast today. So this is a good deal.
There's the accessibility menu, so we can turn on zoom here as well. Whoa! Well, when they say turn on zoom, they mean turn on zoom, don't they? How do you get this back from where it was? Okay. Even in expo mode, it's zoomed in. That's weird. Okay, let's get back up here and turn that off. Ooh, and it's really killed the performance of the desktop to turn zoom on. You see that? It's just like frame, frame, frame. So let's make sure we get that turned off. Wow. Jerky, jerky, jerky. Never mind. I'm not going to be using that. Let's see what else they have for uh, accessibility options. Uh, we got high contrast zoom large text screen reader. And then we've got visual alerts, sticky keys, slow keys, bounce keys. Cool. That just doesn't... Maybe that's because I'm running it in a virtual machine and also at the same time I'm downloading and installing updates. So this is what it did to me yesterday. It got about halfway through. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. I'm going to do it again and see if it goes any faster this time. I just picked up right where it left off. Now we can just let that install over here, I suppose, and go on and look at other things. See, I told you I couldn't guarantee the results here. Let's see what drivers are available. I already installed the drivers for VirtualBox manually, but I think the only other driver that should be available here is going to be the one for the CPU, and I really don't know how much difference that would make in a virtual machine to have it installed. Yep. Don't know whether it's going to let me do this while we're doing that other operation, but we'll see what happens. Like I said, gang, this is an experimental video. It might all just blow up <laughs> at any given time. Trying some different things here. Yeah, it's doing. Well, I guess it did it. Or maybe it's waiting. I don't know. We'll uh, close that and look at that later. Man, it's taking this a long time to download these codecs. Okay, we're moving along now. It got them all. I don't know. Maybe something in the server. All right, that's done. Let's see if we can install the firmware package. Nope. I ran into this uh, playing around with something the other day. I think that's a, a bug they're going to have to look at. Something new with 16.04. And Ubuntu Mate, not Ubuntu Gnome. Well, all right. Let's see. We can uh, go ahead and subscribe so we can get the latest updates for the software boutique. Because that's really the main reason that this is here. And next thing we want to do is look at the new software application from Ubuntu. And um, then we'll look at the software boutique. Okay, we're done there, so I can go ahead and close that. Oh, really?
Installing packages. Yep, okay, so it's updating the Ubuntu Mate welcome here. Not everything in the Ubuntu Mate welcome application works in other distributions, but the really cool thing about it is, is that you do have access to that software boutique. So, I'm going to go ahead and close this terminal up. I think we're done with it. And let's go and take a look at software. All right, let's look at the main software application. This is a big deal. This is GNOME software, and Ubuntu for 16.04 has adopted this as their main application for you to install software on your system that is within the Ubuntu repositories. So, let's go shopping. Let's look for some software. And they have categories here and lists. Pretty straightforward stuff. Let's go to... Let's look for VLC, because I know that's not included. And I want to install VLC. Probably won't get much use out of it in a virtual machine, but you know. Okay, the next thing that we need is Thunderbird, because Ubuntu GNOME uses Evolution for their mail client and calendar. I don't like evolution. I used to love it years ago, and then they changed some things about it, and I started using Thunderbird. So it says it's installing. What else do we want? Let's try Bleach Bit. Wait a minute. Bleach bit as root, it says there. And let's get HTOP. Gotta have HTOP. And we'll install that. It says it's installing. And over here it says it has updates, but we just check the updates. Well, hold on, when this gets done doing what it's doing over there, and I think it is done. Installing, installing. Okay, we're just dealing with that slow repo issue. Man, taking a long time for this to actually do this. So, anyway, this is the new application. We'll go back to the front page here. And I like it. It's very simple and easy to use. And although I don't usually use anything like the software center on Ubuntu anyway. I'm sure that this is a big improvement because the old software center application, that one was really uncool as far as I was concerned. So, let's just uh, take advantage of the desktop here and the fact that we can open up an, another desktop and then we'll open up the software boutique and take a look around in there. Of course you guys have seen that if you've been in past videos. And the main reason why you would want that is because it offers a lot of software that is not available in the repositories for Ubuntu and it makes it a one-click install. So let's open up the software boutique. make sure yeah it's going to load so we can go through here and like okay so if we want the flash player installed we can go ahead and get that if we really need it and then just there's google chrome you can have that skype all one click spotify all one click and this also will allow me to install an application that i cannot live without Let's uh, look at the expo mode here and see how this software is installing over here because I think I have to have that done before I can do anything else. So, 
can switch desktops in a couple of ways. Alternate control uh, up and down will do it. Switch between desktops. And also, I guess when you're out of expo mode, it'll do it. So let's just go back here. Been a long time since I used the GNOME desktop. I don't remember what all the uh, shortcut keyboard shortcuts are, but you'll figure them out pretty quick. So I think it's alternate control X. Let's see. I don't know what that. I don't know what I'm doing there. I'm trying to do some short keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so well that works. I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, so I think that's done. Let's see what updates are here real quick. See how this works through here. Now, I just installed updates when I first booted up the system, but it may have caught some updates between now and then. Nope, it says the system is up to date. Very cool indeed. So, go here, and I'm going to move this application to this desktop. And you'll notice that it dynamically gets rid of that third desktop. So as you roll along, that's what it does. I'd like to use Ubuntu GNOME on one of my systems, but I, I run kind of older hardware, and Ubuntu GNOME is is just it's a hog as far as uh, resources are concerned. So the piece of software that I wanted to get from here, and of course you could get this out of the repositories. We're just goofing around, gang. I'm not saying this is the way you should do it. <laughs> I just wanted to see if it would work. So here we have Synaptic Package Manager. I want to see what that looks like in GNOME 318. I just really like the look of the GNOME desktop. Some people don't. I do. I think it's very modern and it is minimalist, but you can put extensions in here. You can, you know, you can do a lot with this. So let's see if our software showed up. Although I got to admit, in this virtual machine, this is draggy. It's taken a long time from when I click to actually get things done. But remember, the virtual machine is two gigabytes of memory and it's two cores of the processor. So here we can remove things from this favorites list like evolution I'm never going to use that I'm never going to use empathy ever uh, I'm going to look at that gnome photo what is this this is writer see I'd like to I don't need that so remove that this is what I would want if I was doing this we'll leave Firefox where it is and hey I didn't want out of that thank you so we can go here to software and just let's just show all the software not going to do a search. We can go through and just add things to favorites that we want. I want to see what showed up here anyway. Got three pages of it. Bracero is included by default. There's HTOP. And page down. It keeps jumping. I want page two. Thank you. No, page two. It's really where I want to be. Use the arrow key. Maybe that'll work. I'm sure this would perform better if you had the hardware to do it. Okay, here we go. So this is where most of what we need is going to be. I want Thunderbird Mail, definitely. So we add that to favorites. Let's see, what else have we got? Just the LibreOffice. That will open up the opening screen for LibreOffice then you can choose what application you need so then the next one down here I installed VLC but I don't see it you see it somewhere I don't see it let's see here Maybe it didn't install. You see VLC somewhere? 
Yeah, it's in the middle. It's in the middle? Yeah, it's on the very bottom, like right here in the middle. It's not VLC. No, in the middle, on the second one. On the second one. Thanks, Luke. It won't... Hard to get to this... There it is! It was, it was hiding from me. I'm glad you were here. You helped me find, find it. <laughs> My son, Luke, is watching me do this video. He wants to be a, a Linux nerd, so... Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to escape, get out of this, get out of the applications. There we go. And open this back up. And then to reorder this favorites list, all you do is just drag them. So if you want Thunderbird right there next to... Firefox, there you go. I don't want Rhythmbox either. So that's how you do it. And there's LibreOffice. We move that up here. So if that's how that works, you can just go through here and set up your applications. Pretty simple and straightforward. And uh, we'll do a quick tour here before we wrap up the video. We already looked at the activities. Here's where your clock is. And this is also where the notif system notifications are, right here. And over here we have some pretty basic stuff, just indicators. And here you can open up your account. And you could log out from here. You can get settings here. And we're going to look at some of those. You can change the background. Bless you. Let's do this one. Oh, we have a bunch of wallpapers, don't we? Hold on, let's go ahead and cancel that for right now. Because we want the regular back background. So let's, let's select one. Something that kind of complements the dark theme a little bit better. I don't know, I can't decide. Oh, I like that one. We'll do, we'll do that one. That's kind of got some nice colors to it. Okay, select. And then when the screen locks, we can choose the same thing. Or you can have a different. Or you can choose something from your pictures folder, or your photos folder. So that's cool. All right, so we have selected a new background. I like that a lot. Let's see, notifications, online account, privacy, language, search, and let's look at power. There's really not much in the settings menu itself. To really get control over the desktop, you want to look at Ubuntu Tweak. Okay, so I do want to change that to never. It's a virtual machine. And the automatic suspend is off. All right, so let's see, let's compare that settings to the tweak tool real quick. It's kind of strange the way that rendered. It's got the applications behind it and then it has the icon that I was looking for on top. I did that before, didn't it? So let me go into the power settings here and select what happens when you shut the lid on the laptop all that kind of stuff also here we can get extensions uh, a lot of people who use the gnome desktop install a lot of extensions to add functionality because when you first install it it's really quite minimal but the problem is is that those extensions when you get a gnome desktop update in like let's say Arch Linux that updates everything immediately that can break your desktop and stuff stops working probably in Ubuntu GNOME 1604 that would not be much of an issue because the desktop uh, is kind of frozen at 318 but I'm gonna tell you what that desktop is already six 
months old and a couple years down the road this thing's going to be supported for three years so three years down the road lord knows where gnome is going to be they're pretty fast paced and cutting edge all right so i guess we have goofed around looking at this pretty much for long enough if you have a really beefy computer with a good graphics card then this is an awesome desktop to play around with but as you can see here, this thing is, I know I've opened up a lot of applications and done a lot with it, but this thing is using a gig of memory just to run the desktop at this point. I don't have any other applications open on the system. So I don't know whether it's supposed to show that in the background or not there. That doesn't look right the way that is rendering okay all right that just stays open all the time you have to click that again that's kind of new i don't remember it working that way before all right gang so there you go it's a look at uh ubuntu gnome 1604 very nice actually just uh you better have some really beefy hardware to make this thing work so anyhow Thank you for watching the video. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. I can't get to the screen recorder to say goodbye until I do. I'm going to be playing around with that. But like I said, I doubt very seriously whether I will install this on any of my, my old hardware because, wow, you know. I do like the Mate desktop, but I always get intrigued by GNOME 3. I'm not a GNOME 3 hater. Some people are. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was fun hanging out with you. And we'll do something more substantial somewhere down the road soon. Check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And if you would, please give it a like. And also check out FreedomPenguin.com. Got a new article coming up that is going to be posted in the next couple of days there. And it should be very interesting to see how the community reacts to my latest contribution to Freedom Penguin. Talk to you all again soon.